Welcome to the Witchy Work Wishes podcast, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. Welcome to Witchy Work Wishes. I'm your host, Charlene, and today we are actually jumping into another new series that I am adding called Herbal Magic. And yes, I know I'm a little off track. Um, Today was going to be Potions and Spells with Annika, but we bumped out uh, the recording one week, so I swapped topics. Now in this new series, I'll be grabbing a different herb each month and focusing on the specifics of it, how we can use it in our craft, and how we can use it with our witchy work wishes. But first, I like to share some things I did over the weekend to help with my own personal practice. If you are ever wondering what mood I'm in, you can probably guess based off of where the moon is. And I'm laughing because, man, that would have been great to know when I was younger. If I had been better about tracking the moon cycle with my own cycle, I think I would be much farther ahead than I am right now. But right now, I am feeling tired. I had a big rush of things done with the build-up to the last full moon, and as she, you know, is slowing down and shining less... So am I. I still got a bunch of things done, but at the end on Sunday, you know, I really needed one more day, just one more day to regroup. I think it is part of this liver shrinking diet that I'm on right now for the surgery next week. It's certainly a different physical state to be in, but if I'm being honest, it triggers a bunch of emotional stuff too. So lots of changes in the past week, you know, all good all what I want, and all part of the big picture of, you know, quote unquote me, you know, that I'm working on. But what's different this time is being mindful of each and everything I'm doing right now. And it sucks. It really, (laughs) it just sucks. You know, looking at past behavior that has caused me to gain weight, and it's hard, it's so hard to stop a habit. It's hard to be honest as to why I'm craving things. Why, even when I know I'm not physically hungry, I still want to eat. Being brutally honest is the only way I'm going to change my habits and let go of what no longer serves me. It's hard, but I can do it. I know I can. So I opened up a new deck, an oracle deck, called Moonology by Yasmin Boland. And I asked my first question with it. I did a three-card poll for the past, present, and future and asked the moon cards what they saw. I know I'm struggling with the big restrictions, Um, the diet restrictions, so getting a little guidance was needed on Sunday night. I shuffled the deck three times and chose three cards, and here is what I drew. For the past, I drew the new moon in Virgo, which says, trust all will be well. Present, I drew the new moon in Aquarius, which says, open up to change. And for the future, I pulled the full moon in Leo, which says, go wild. Now, for the past, the new moon in Virgo card says, trust all will be well. Sometimes we want everything to happen yesterday, but divine timing is a real thing. Sometimes we need more pieces of a jigsaw puzzle to fall into place before we can get what we want. Slowing down now is the key for you to get what you want. So take your time and allow events to unfold. See what you can do for others as, you know, Really quick and easy way both to distract yourself and boost your good karma while you wait for your dreams to manifest. For the present, I pulled the new moon in Aquarius, which says, open up to change. Big changes are forecast, but you need to let events unfold with as little steering as possible from you. Sometimes you just need to take a bit of space from a person or situation if you know you've been too emotional about someone or something. This card offers you the chance to cool things down. A rational, even slightly aloof assessment of your current circumstances is called for. Allow things to develop. Try to think of your situation from a different angle. And for the future, I drew the full moon in Leo, which says go wild. Uh, It says there are times when your best bet in manifesting and in life is to throw all your cards up in the air, so to speak, and see how they fall. As tempting as it might be to control a situation, you'll be better off now if you just release and go a little wild. You'll get an answer to your question soon, so you might as well enjoy the ride. 
The unexpected thing is that having fun is one of the most powerful ways of manifesting your desires. Distance yourself from arrogant people. Find a balance between having a great time and attending to the people who need you. Worrying about something or someone triggers the law of attraction just as much as positive thoughts. So focus on the positive. Yeah, that sums it up, doesn't it? (laughs) And I think it's a pretty good draw for the first time using this deck. I am happy and I will be using it again. All right, the moon. Well, on Wednesday the 8th, as this airs, she is in her waning crescent phase. We are getting down to that last little sliver before she moves into her dark moon phase on Sunday. So what's good right now? Well, it is still about releasing. It's all about letting go of bad or harmful feelings. It's about letting go of bad or harmful pain that we've been holding. It's about banishing curses, cord cutting spells. It's about clearing the space so new things can come in. And wisdom. Clear that space so wisdom can come in so you can gain greater knowledge. It's about resting, nourishing, nourishing your body and your soul, and letting your dreams guide you. It's about spirituality. Ah, Speaking of rest and dreams, guess what is great to help us with that? Mm -hmm. Lavender. So let's jump into herbal magic. The lavender plant. Now I know for our craft, lavender is one of the basic herbs, but let's find out why. First, the debate, let's just do it first. Is lavender a flower or is lavender an herb? Well, guess what, it's both. (laughs) So let's say it's a flowering herb to make everyone happy. Now there are many, like many, many different varieties of lavender, which really does help because we all live in different climates and areas. And each varietal will have a climate and area that they thrive in. For today's episode, I'm going to use the name lavender in general, so you know, it kind of covers all of them. Now, it is originally a Mediterranean plant and part of the mint family, which was actually new to me. Uh, the name lavender comes from the Latin word laver, uh, which means to wash, since lavender was historically added to you know, baths and used to wash clothes and clean the house. We also now know that lavender has medicinal properties and can be used to help us sleep, help us relax, reduce anxiety, as well as provide a nice general calming effect. It's a perennial plant, which means it regrows every year. And it's considered an evergreen, which has more of like a woodsy feel. Now lavender is stunning, right? It's beautiful. And depending on what varietal you are growing, We'll see bright colors of blue, uh, purple, pink. Um, Some lavender is white, um, but they're going to be on long stems with green leaves. Now for growing it, you may want to start with something from the nursery. I have not tried starting with lavender seeds for good reason. It's a really hard herb to start from seed. But if you have an amazing green thumb and can do it, you'll want to start your seeds indoors in the winter because they take about three months to, uh, to root. Now plant, of course, um, in spring, once you know that morning frost is done, and make sure it has good drainage. That is one of the things the lavender plant requires. Now once you have a happy lavender plant, I think watering it is pretty basic. When the plant is young, you need a, you know maybe like a little bit more water. Of course, when it's blooming, you're gonna need a little bit more, like maybe a couple times a week. Otherwise, every other week I think is okay on more mature plants, but double check with your specific varietal. Now, easier path than starting from seed is take taking a cutting from an existing plant and propagating it. It's just so much fun to do this with lots of different types of plants. To start a new lavender plant from a cutting, there are some general pointers, and I pulled these from the Farmer's Almanac to help us along today. It says... Cut following the plant's bloom. Choose side shoots for cuttings that have no buds. Cut very low near the root, getting several inches of stem. Gently scrape the skin off the bottom portion of the stem on one side with a knife. Remove foliage on the bottom two inches of the stem. Fill a small pot, four inches or so, with potting mix. 
and it does say optional, dip each cutting in rooting hormone first. Uh, next it says insert bare stem into potting soil. Firm the soil and water in. Cover the whole pot with clear plastic or a polythene bag to create humidity. Place pots in warm, shaded area. Allow about three weeks for roots to appear. If you tug gently, the root shouldn't move. Uh, then remove the bag. Water when soil is dry, um, like an inch down, and feed with a quarter cup strength liquid plant fertilizer once a week. After a few weeks, you should be able to transplant it into a larger pot. Now, as much as we love to look at the beautiful plants, if you are like me, it's all about pruning lavender so we can use it in our spells and potions, and generally around our home. So back to the Farmer's Almanac, they suggest that uh, we harvest lavender in the morning hours when the oils are most concentrated. Snip off stems when about half the flower buds have opened, cutting the stems as long as possible. Gather them into bundles and secure them with rubber bands. Dry the bundles of lavender by hanging them in a sheltered, cool, dark place with good air circulation. After a few weeks, the flowers will have dried fully and can be shaken gently from the stems into a lidded jar. Store the flowers in a cool, dark place. Now, of course, storing lavender flowers for later use in a lidded jar somewhere cool and dark is amazing, but we can also pop them straight into a sachet to you know, keep with our towels, sheets, or clothing. It does help to repel moths. Um, if you suffer from insomnia, try inserting the sachet into a pillow so the calming scent can help you drift off to a restful slumber. Well, that is great advice from the Farmer's Almanac. And guess what? It's not just about the gorgeous lavender blooms and flower part of the plant. We can harvest the leaves too and incorporate them into our workings. And yes, the leaves have a bunch of properties we want to grab and work with. Lavender leaves have something called linoleol acetate, linalool, perio alcohol, and eucalyptol. If I said that one right. Okay, what are those things? <laughs> I had to look them up. So linoleol acetate, this organic compound is a phytochemical found in a bunch of spice plants and flowers, similar to you know, like mint oil and bergamot oil. Now linalool, well, that is the natural teraphine alcohol that is also found in spice plants and flowers. Perillolol, peril, peril, alcohol. <laughs> this comes from the essential oil part of the leaves. And what about eu eucalyptol? Well, if you just thought of the eucalyptus tree, you are right on track. It's a colorless liquid also called cineola. All right, that might be way more information than you wanted, but it's a good base, right? So let's get into the good stuff with how we can use lavender in our practice. I've been using lavender in and around my home for a very, very long time. We, we all have, right? Witch or no witch, there are so many versions of lavender essential oil, lavender sachets, lavender sprays that, you know, my guess is just about everyone has used it once in their past for something. We all know it's been used for thousands of years, certainly go back, going back to Roman times, um, they added it to their baths. But we also have past um, Egyptian times where lavender soaked clothes were used to mummify people. So it's been around. It's been around for a long, long time. And honestly, it's probably, I think, one of the most familiar herbs for us. Now on the witchy side though, in our associations, lavender is part of the air element. It promotes sleep, peace and dreams, and helps with our spirituality and our divination practice. It also promotes love and relationships. It promotes self-love, promotes healing and calmness, as well as holding purification and cleansing elements. Now, lavender is associated with the planet Mercury, and this is a masculine herb. Did you know it's also called the elf leaf? <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. All right, as you can imagine, there are so many ways we can bring lavender into our practices. Not only is it a wonderful herb to use in our spells and potions, it's edible. So for the kitchen witches, it's a great herb to incorporate. I'll start it off with my next witchy project, you know, and what I'm gonna be doing for some holiday gifts. My boys are in their 20s now, and a staple linen spray when they were little was actually made from lavender. I purchased it because of the cute label on the front, which said, no more monster spray. And this spray mattered. It really mattered when it was time for bed, because for them, 
it was protection. And for me, it meant two sleepy boys drifting off in peace for a great night's sleep. Over the years, as they grew older, the label did not have the same meaning, but the pillow spray certainly had the same effects. And I would like to duplicate that for them this year with my own blend of a sleepy bedtime magical pillow spray. For my own potion or spray, I'll be using the following ingredients. I'm going to be grabbing moon water, specifically dark moon water. Um, I'm not sure if I'll use vodka or witch hazel yet. Probably, probably witch hazel since I think that will complement the natural lavender smell. Um, if you don't like either of those options, look for some type of dilute or liquid as it's needed to help the oils mix with the water. I'm going to use a little bit of dried lavender from my garden. I'm going to add one dried rosebud and I'm going to add a little bit of lavender essential oil. Now for me, I like the doTERRA line. I talked with Kathy, oh gosh, about this time last year, um, who is my doTERRA expert <laughs> in my area. Um, she's with SYV Oils, and I have not looked back since then. Like, I've loved doing the little baby steps of incorporating essential oils, like pure, good essential oils, into my, into my routine. So, lavender essential oil from doTERRA. I'm also going to add um, some small amethyst crystals, a couple of rose quartz crystals, and a black tourmaline. I'm going to mix it all together um, into a small, dark brown glass bottle with a little spray nozzle. Now with the sprays, I'll be gifting a lepidolite stone. It's a great purple and pink stone that can be used to help us with insomnia and to help us with restful sleep, you know, in general. So that one is not going in the spray bottle, but it will be with the bottle like as a gift. Now I toyed with adding rosemary and honestly, I'm still not sure. I might do it. Rosemary is good for helping us remember our dreams and both my boys have very good dream recall abilities. So not sure, maybe. Uh, now, what is going to make this a special bedtime pillow spray is going to be the spell I put into it. And that will be done when creating the magic and putting the intentions in while mixing the ingredients together. I believe I have enough to create a little glass bottle for um, some gifts too for family members, but lavender pillow spray is one of the magical things I'll be creating for Yule and the holidays this year. Now, I know we rescheduled Annika for next week, and she'll be helping us with our spells and potions, focusing on tallow, but I'll also be making a sleepy handsaw for the boys, too. Now, this one I have not done before, so I can't say I know what I'm doing here, but the ingredients are all things I either readily have or can easily get. For this, I'll be using my own garden's lavender again, some chamomile, essential oil, coconut oil, and some beeswax. This also needs to be, and will be made on a dark moon. I don't have any containers for this one, so it is something I will need to go and purchase. All right, so what are some other things we can do with lavender in our craft? Now, lavender bath salts, that's a pretty big one. This could easily be another great holiday gift if you have someone in your life who enjoys baths. The rustic mason jars filled up with the salt and dried lavender, you know, it looks so, so pretty. For this one, you really only need three ingredients. You need Epsom salt, you know, the plain, no fragrance Epsom salt. You need lavender essential oil, be sure to use a good one. And you need dried lavender. Now this bath salt will help in resting the body, uh, reducing anxiety and restlessness, and will also help in, you know, that get ready for bed routine, which is so important to have a good work morning the next day. For the salt though, I actually saw a great tip um, to grind some of the salt and lavender, lavender together while leaving some of the dried flowers and salt in larger pieces. The balance really does make the mason jar look amazing. Now, kitchen witchcraft, oh my goodness. There are so many yummy recipes and fun ways to use lavender in our baking and in our cooking. And really this can be done since the lavender flower is edible. Now, if anyone is a Downton Abbey fan, you have probably already heard of the lavender tea bread. Lavender frosting is popular for cupcakes. Simple lavender syrup is good. There are lavender lemon cookies, lavender shortbread cookies, double yum there. <laughs> um, the recipes seem endless, right? But just to point out, I'll be creating my lavender sprays and lavender salve in the kitchen. So all magical things go there. Now, the direction I stir the ingredients, the intentions, the words I say, all of it. All of it matters as I'm creating the potion and spell. So it might not be kitchen witchcraft in that I'm going to eat it, but kitchen witchcraft 
witchcraft in that is where I am creating it. All right, fairies and lavender. Now, I have been working on my garden, you know, little by little, trying to make it um, magical so that it attracts fairies. I think the natural addition of the toads and frogs is just amazing. I am so happy they came. Now, my nice solar fairy lights make me feel very special. and I love the way they look in the yard. But did you know certain plants and flowers are known to attract fairies? Mm -hmm. Yep, and the beautiful purple flowering herb plant, lavender, is right at the top. Now, lavender is known for helping us connect to other realms. I think most people associate it with our sleep and our dreams and, you know, crossing the realms there. But it's good for our garden, too, and opening up doors for the fairies there. Now, lavender herb sticks, you know, this mixed with rosemary sprigs, oh, the smell, so good. But small aside, lavender is good to clear our homes, our offices, really any room we have negative energy or any room we want to purify. When we light our herbs in, you know, whatever format that comes for you, we're releasing all of the amazing properties of the herb into the air around us. And it does not need to be a big, huge bundle. You can take a single dried sprig of it and cleanse rooms with just that. Now, lavender oil, you know, this one I think is a good one to have on hand in general, especially when we make ourselves to use in other workings. We may need it to anoint a candle. Um, we can use it in our homes. We can use it in spells with love and beauty or peace and healing. It really is simple to make. You just combine the lavender and oil. <laughs> it can be olive oil whatever oil you use, uh, but let them blend together somewhere cool and out of the direct light for a couple weeks. Strain it and uh, voila, you have it, your own lavender oil. Office stuff, let's pull lavender into our witchy work wishes. While lavender is best known for sleepy time stuff, we are not going to aim for falling asleep at work. Rather, we're going to pull from some other qualities lavender has that can help us in the corporate world. First set we can work with is our mood, our anxiety levels, and depression. None of those things are good to help us excel in the workplace, but we can take steps to help manage it while we work. Lavender has a calming effect. Just as it helps us relax and, you know, get ready for bed, it can also help us with our anxiety. It calms our system down and it lifts our spirits up. And that is something good for the office. We talked about using lavender in our spudge or, you know, our herbal sticks to cleanse our spaces, but lavender can be used to clean our spaces as well. Long before we had our chemicals and antiseptics for cleaning, our ancestors used lavender to clean. Lavender also reduces uh, inflammation and pain. So those nasty little work headaches uh, that we tend to get, we can combat them with lavender. How about lavender as an office air freshener? Mm -hmm. We can go back to our pillow spray and use, you know, that on the carpet, but we can also have the actual sprigs of lavender in a vase or even hanging upside down on like a bulletin board or cork board drying. You know, for, for that matter, go for um, some car spray. <laughs> have a nice, relaxing drive to and from the office. Now, if you are an office tea drinker, adding lavender honey to your afternoon cup is a great option or even having lavender tea right at work. For the honey, uh, be sure to grab your local honey and add dried lavender to it. Stir and store in a cool, dark spot for a good couple of weeks. Be sure to turn the jar every day, you know, like flip it upside down and flip it back side up so that it keeps mixing. But then you basically strain out the lavender flowers and you are you're ready to go. Now, lavender is edible, so you may want to keep the dried flowers in the honey. So uh, you do you here. Let's see, other things for the office, um, lavender is great for, um, for money spells. You could also put it under the front office doormat so everyone who enters and you know comes in, they come in with peace. You can use it as a decoration piece, which honestly would serve as a room scent too. Now, lavender is with the air element, which is a masculine energy. Now, not all corporate environments are going to be masculine, but usually work will call out that trait at some point during the day. See, ravens and crows are with the air element, hummingbirds, bats, butterflies, owls, and eagles, even spiders. Air is about inspiration, which is a great energy to bring into your office. It's about creativity and new beginnings. So if you work with that side of lavender and bridge your office into it, you can come up with some wonderful workings here too. All right, the lavender plant. 
It is one of the basic herbs our craft uses for good reason. It's both a flower and an herb, and the name lavender comes from that Latin word lavar, lavar, <laughs> lavar, which means to wash. Lavender has medicinal properties and can be used to help us sleep, relax, and reduce anxiety, as well as provide a nice general calming effect and positive energy. Lavender's plant is mercury, and the herb is considered a masculine energy. Lavender is part of the air element. It promotes sleep, peace, dreams, and helps our spirituality and divination practice. It also promotes love in relationships. It promotes love with ourselves. It's healing and it's calming, as well as holding purification and cleansing elements. I love using lavender in my practice. And with that, I do have a poem for you today, so I will be right back with it. All right, my poem, I specifically wrote this with my boys in mind and the holiday gifts I am making for them. And it goes. Good night, my son. Sleep tight. You're safe and sound in this home tonight. May all your stress now release as you drift away in calming peace. Dream big and dream wild. May all your dreams be beguiled. Rest now and sleep tight. My spell will keep you safe tonight. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the lavender plant and herb as much as I did. I really do appreciate you being a listener, and please, if you have something specific you would like to hear more about, reach out to me. I love getting notes. But that's it for this week. I will talk with you next week. Thank you for joining me today at Witchy Work Wishes, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. For more information and additional content, please visit me online at witchyworkwishes.com. If you want to send me a personal note, please email me at info at witchyworkwishes.com. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Witchy Work Wishes.